Yeah, Frank. Megan, we're in the state that probably matters most. We're just 90 days from when New Hampshire casts its votes, and New Hampshire is a great predictor of where America goes. So I want a show of hands from our New Hampshire voters. You had a winner tonight. How many of you thought it was Marco Rubio? Now, there was one significant segment, Megan, and it was very early in the debate where he performed admirably. He's talking about education. Let's take a look. For the life of me, I don't know why we have stigmatized vocational education. Welders make more money than philosophers. We need more welders and less philosophers. And if we do that, and if we do this, if we do this, we will be able to increase wages for millions of Americans. So what was it about Marco Rubio that was so positive? Give me a word or phrase to describe him. Uh, he was very eloquent. Passionate. I think he's young. Very articulate. Slick. Charisma. Strong. He's inspirational. Fresh. He's not my candidate. Now, I've got to ask you a question. You said inspirational. How old are you? 19 years old. So this is your first vote? Yeah. Why Rubio? I agree with him on most policy issues. I mean, I look at all the other plans uh, that the candidates have put out there, and he's the one who I'm most in line with. You know, he's socially conservative. Um, he has a tax plan that's willing to help out families, and that is really important to him in the vision that he has for this new American You've century. You've picked up his language. That's interesting. <laughs> now I want to ask, how many of you switched votes? Some of you came in here supporting a different candidate. Why did you switch? Uh, I switched because um, I went from Carson to Rubio um, during this debate just because I liked his vision for America. I like that he wants to put more money into our military, which I think has been depleted under this president. Why did you switch? Uh, I was <clears throat> originally supporting Bush, and I switched to Rubio because I liked his passion. I liked his message, his leadership, uh, his vision for the future. You just made a whole bunch of people very upset down in, in Bush headquarters. A <laughs> couple more switched. Tell me why. I think the biggest reason was he showed some energy. He showed some charisma. He had the ability to connect. Uh, Carson's a great guy, but he's just so slow and quiet. And that appeals to a certain group, like the older people. So, so let me ask you by show of hands, some of you, I'm not going to take the bait there. Some of you turned away from Carson tonight and went to other people. I want to hear from you right now. Tell me why. I changed to Cruz because he has a crystal clear plan. His actions support what he's talking about in the Senate, and he um, really does reflect what I think is a true America. So I want to go to a clip. Megan, there was a really powerful clip that Ted Cruz used. He talked about immigration. And just as Ben Carson did in the very first debate, saying that Republicans are not racist, Ted Cruz got righteously indignant about immigration. And watch how high the lines climb. If a bunch of people with journalism degrees were coming over and driving down the wages in the press. <laughs> then we would see stories about the economic calamity that is befalling our nation. And I will say for those of us who believe people ought to come to this country legally and we should enforce the law. We're tired of being told it's anti-immigrant. It's offensive. You guys agree with that? Is Absolutely. it offensive to you? Yes. Absolutely. I watched you. You guys were cheering on television. Jane, <laughs> yes. tell me I why. I mean, clarity and, and someone that really believes in what they're saying. It shows through. This guy stood for all of social, uh, all the social issues and all the conservative issues. What he's was the guy. it that he said, Matt, that was so powerful to you? Um, that he, uh, he's, he's going to... He, he, He's going to um, do something that's going to protect my kids, and he, he's got passion about, you know, not, not believing in amnesty and not, not doing the things that, you know, that this government's doing now. Who here believes immigration is the number one issue in this campaign? Well, it's certain, right See, this is happening there. in New right Hampshire. Right Absolutely. So, yeah. so, but you just, you were shouting at the TV during that segment. Why? Well, immigration, it, it's taking away from us. I'm sorry. I want to see it stopped. I, my parents were immigrants. Bring in the legal immigrants, absolutely, but it's not helping our economy, and there are ways to cut off what is keeping them here. So we're going to get a chance to talk more about that and the other candidates. But, Megan, when we come back a little bit later on the show, we are going to discuss the debate don'ts, the things that you should not be saying that upset our supporters, and we're going to show you the worst debate response that we have ever tested. Uh. <laughs>
<laughs> and they're laughing at it now, but it's not funny for the candidates. <laughs> they seem like such nice people, but hey, they have some bad news for some of the candidates. Frank, great to see you. Thank you. Well, in the, in the days leading up to tonight's debate, the big news was the attacks on Dr. Ben Carson, as several media outlets tried to suggest that he had made up parts of his life story. But many of those reports came up very short. And when Carson had a chance to remind the audience tonight, he took it. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for not asking me what I said in the 10th grade. I appreciate that. <laughs> We should vet all candidates. I have no problem with being vetted. What I do have a problem with is being lied about and then uh, putting that out there as truth. And I don't even mind that so much if they do it about, with everybody, like people on the other side. We have to start treating people the same and finding out what people really think and what they're made of. And people who know me know that I'm an honest person. Turning us now, Chris Dyerwall, our digital politics editor, and Howie Kurtz, who is host of Fox News' Media Buzz. Guys, thank you. We did it to you again, Howie. There you are between our Dyerwall Kelly sandwich. Uh, but let me start with you, Chris. What, what did you think? Was there a clear winner tonight? Yeah, I think Carson was pretty clearly the winner. Really? He addre absolutely. He addressed the concern uh, that had come before, but also he showed a little more vim, a little more vigor. He was more engaged. Uh, and his answers, though not exactly the Britannica, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica in depth, uh, showed some more grasp on issues and I think probably would have been very appealing. And his closing statement, just as his, wa as his was with you in the first debate, was dynamite. It was the perfect way mm -hmm. to close it off. He did a great job. Mm -hmm. Howie, what'd you think? Ben Carson did exactly what he needed to do by coolly dismissing the media tax as we just saw. He could have gone out for pizza at that point, and he still would have done very, very well. <laughs> Donald Trump was more restrained, uh, didn't cut in, was more like mm -hmm. a seasoned politician, and that was deliberate. I heard Trump say moments ago that he didn't he thought it would be rude to cut in, so he disappeared for stretches. But in pure debating terms, the best orators on that stage, as the last time, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz, they're both very good on their feet. I thought Jeb Bush had a much better night, but he didn't have a great one-liner until the very end when he indirectly called Trump the agitator-in-chief, but he didn't use his name. Mm -hmm. Chris, Trump wasn't the agitator-in-chief tonight. Mm -hmm. He was more subdued. He was uh, a more diplomatic Trump indeed uh, and said laudatory things about his fellow colleagues. Uh, maybe that's OK. Maybe his supporters don't like it if he acts more like a regular politician. Maybe they only like it if he is doling out the insults. We'll see. Uh, but cer but certainly we can say this. When Carly Fiorina jammed him up uh, on Vladimir Putin and when she grabbed a hold of that moment, that was indicative of how the evening was, not just for him, but for her. Mm -hmm. She found ways to get in the discussion. She had a very good debate. I agree with Howie. Cruz, Rubio, both had very good nights, but I also put Fiorina in the mix. And let's throw some love to Rand Paul, who finally got the lemon out of his mouth that he had had for the previous <laughs> debates and did an okay job. He I'll had a serviceable debate. Uh, here's a tease for you, though. Trump has got a very good comeback against Fiorina on that Putin thing, and we're going to mm -hmm. talk about it a little bit later in the show. Um, Howie, uh, did, the, did, the, did anybody's fortunes change tonight? Bottom line, probably not. Because there was such a laser focus on economy and jobs and taxes and even the IMF, it was a good debate for the country to hear some fleshing out of positions, but not that many jabs were thrown. So my takeaway from this, after a good couple of hours, is that uh, the two non-politicians didn't do anything to jeopardize their standing. The two Cuban-American senators uh, still leading the so-called establishment wing. They both had very good nights. And Jeb uh, is off life support, and maybe he lives to fight another day. Here's the thing about the two front runners, Chris. Is it is it all about you know they don't want to jeopardize their standing, but they also would like to grow their share of the electorate. They are they are neck and neck for the front runner position, but they need more. They need to collect some of the votes of those under guys so they'll get out. Uh, this is their game plan, Trump and, and Carson, and they can run away with it. Biggest difference in tonight's debate than the ones that came before it was that there were fewer of those people. Uh, there were fewer of the candidates on stage. That means more scrutiny for the front runners. It means more pressure on them. And I can tell you, having seen John Kasich's performance, that stage is going to get smaller still. Uh, why? That why? He is getting killed on Twitter. Killed. Because that was a dire 
a dire performance that he gave. Uh, he scolded his own party from pen to post. He gave an answer on bank bailouts that I, I just, it was, it was flabbergasting. And I could not believe, it, it was so much in the mold of John Huntsman. It was so much mm -hmm. in the mold mm -hmm. of the Republican who's running against his own party. It's like, dude, you are in the wrong town. Howie, the, he was openly booed. Trump got booed once or twice. Kasich got booed when he was defending Bank of America, the bailout of Bank of America, saying you can't let all those shareholders lose all their money, those people. Um, it, you know, it may just be that the, that the debate audience wasn't with him, but on Twitter they weren't, weren't, weren't with him either. Well, Twitter can be a pretty <laughs> angry neighborhood. Look, John Kasich... John Kasich needs to make a move. And part of his brand is he's a different kind of Republican. He's a compassionate Republican that may or may not sell this year, but he doesn't have that much time. He's got to make a showing in New Hampshire. He was speaking to the voters of New Hampshire as much as anybody else in America tonight. Guys, great to see you. Oh, why are you shaking your head? Look at it. <laughs> great to see you both. Bye.